Hi, Rich from Colorado Paratech. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a basic EM pump. Um, a very popular device that gives off EMFs and is said to attract entities and supposedly give them energy so that they can manifest or possibly uh, communicate. It usually helps the quality of EVPs. We found uh, it does sometimes increase activity. So uh, the thing is, is uh, there's very few people willing to share this information out there. So, you know, I decided I'm going to give back to the community that's been so good to us. Um, so, uh, here's one of the first tutorial things I'm going to show you how to make. Uh, this is a very simple device, uh, very cheap and easy to make. You use a basic Radio Shack project box. Um, you can use a smaller one. You've seen these for sale on eBay. Uh, I actually sell these on eBay as well. Um, but the, uh, you know, cheap box costs about three bucks. I like the bigger boxes because it, there's a little larger air mass flow inside so that motor cool when it's running because these things run continuously. Okay, so three dollars or so for a box, you know, basic cheap mini switch, just a basic on off switch. Um, costs about a buck. Uh, basic DC motor. Uh, you want something that's going to run three to twelve volts. Uh, these things are, I've used a variety of different kind of motors. But I've actually settled on using these because uh, they fit very nicely inside the box and I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, another thing to keep in mind, these in particular come off of uh, Xbox 360 uh, tray motors. It's what opens and closes the tray. So you know you don't even have to buy one of those if you have a dead three, uh, Xbox 360 laying around the house. And who doesn't? So you can just uh, open that sucker up and get the little motor that opens the... Uh, CD tray. Alrighty, um, another thing you'll need is a battery connector. Uh, these run on uh, double A's, so that's a three volt load. Um, very cheap and easy to get again, probably about a buck, something for that. Uh, and then one of the key components, a magnet. These are rare earth magnets, they're very powerful, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Even auto supply stores sell these. Um, but they're very, very powerful. Uh, I like the kind with the hole in the middle because it helps when you're mounting it, it helps to stay on there. Now a couple other things you will use is a, or well, you can use, is a, uh, you will need a soldering iron of course and solder. Uh, very basic connections though so if you if you know anything about soldering stuff together you can do this. Um, and I also like to use a hot glue gun to mount the magnet to the uh, motor spindle and to mount the, ma the motor inside uh, to secure it. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, first and probably one of the most important parts of doing this is mounting the magnet to the motor. Um, so it's a good idea to get a motor that either has a spindle already on it or get some sort of um, uh, motor and mount combination that uh, will support the magnet. Now the magnets are very strong so you're going to have to work with this sucker to get it on straight because if it's not on straight it's going to wobble around inside and uh, make a lot of noise and possibly come off. Uh, first step is just to get it mounted as straight as you can on the end of the spindle. I like to put a little hot glue on there. And just pop that sucker on and hold it for a few seconds. And get it as straight as possible. Now it's almost impossible to get these things on perfectly straight, but you know, as straight as you possibly can. And that's really the basic component of the EM pump. Now, after I've got it mounted on there, I like to really secure that on there because this thing's going to be spinning at high speed. And also, um, if you drop it, there's a good chance you can pop the magnet loose on this thing. So, just want to put enough uh, hot glue on there to hold it on. And try not to get it on your fingers because it burns. And let's get that a little straighter. Now another thing, woo, got a little bit too much on there. But uh, another thing you want to do is you don't want your hot glue to actually get on the spindle because what it will do is stop your motor from spinning. So make sure it stays just on the mount and the magnet. Now it takes a minute or two for these things to dry. So I'm going to let this uh, dry and we will continue. Okay, now 
Uh, one of the crucial steps here is mounting the motor inside the chassis of the unit itself. And uh, basically you can see I've already mounted the battery compartment. Basically just drill a couple of holes and another hole for the mount on the uh, battery holder itself. Run the leads through. But uh, put some hot glue in here. And the thing about this is when you're using hot glue, be careful because you don't want the hot glue going inside the holes of the motor. There's always vent holes or screw holes on these things. If any of your glue gets inside this motor, it's toast. So uh, be very careful of that. Basically, you want to mount this in here. Well, this is one of the reasons why I like these boxes is because they fit very nicely inside. Just like so. And make sure your leads are away from the motor itself. Now I like to run them up close to the uh, battery connector. That's just personal preference. It doesn't really matter as long as you keep the leads away from the motor. Because whoa, see how strong that magnet is. You don't <laughs> you don't want your leads getting tangled up in that thing because you know it will break your motor or break the leads. Either way, you end up with a dead box. So there you go. Run the leads up like so. And now you got to break out the soldering iron. Okay, so um, I've installed the switch. Uh, really, where you put the switch doesn't matter as long as it's not too close to the motor and uh, whatever's convenient for you. I just put it here for ergonomic reasons. Um, now, what you want to do is you want to take the positive lead, the red lead, from the battery, from the battery holder, go to the middle switch. You see with my fat thumb in the way. There we go. Put that on the middle switch, and that's the power coming from the battery to your switch. Now, um, what I, like, I also like to put an LED on, just so I can see the things on and know if my battery's got enough juice to push this thing. Sometimes you can't hear the motor, so uh, it's a good idea to have an LED on it so you can see if it's uh, on or not. Now, the other thing is you can put the LED pretty much anywhere as well. You just want to make sure that if you're running a, a AA or a AAA rig like this, it's three volts, and you want to get an LED that will handle three volts. Otherwise, it will burn it up. Um, okay, so anyway, so I'm going to wire this a little differently. At this point, you don't have to go beyond what I'm going to do here but um, to wire up the LED. But what you will do next, and I'll show you the finished product here, you wire the hot lead, the red lead, from the motor to one of these outside posts. Depending on which way you want it to switch when it turns on, it doesn't really matter. So your red lead from the battery goes to the center post. Your red lead from the motor goes to one of the outside posts. Um, and your ground just goes straight to ground. Now I wire it a little differently because I have to also hook in the LED. And I'll show you how to do that if you want to have an LED on yours as well. But I'm going to wire this up and I'll be right back. Okay, now you can see the assembled unit here, well uh, the wired unit. Now what we've done is we've wired the red lead from the motor to the outside post here. I've actually gone beyond this. If you're going to install an LED then you need to go ahead and take a lead from that post to the positive lead on the LED. The way you tell if the LED is positive or negative lead on it, the longer lead is always the positive lead. Okay, and then I've taken the black wire, the ground from the motor, to the ground wire, or the black wire here from the battery holder, and also run an additional lead from the ground to the ground lead or negative lead on the LED. Now, basically, that's it. It's a simple thing. If you don't want your LEDs, forget this part. Just run the, again, to recap, run the battery lead to the center post of your switch. Run the positive lead from the motor to an outside post. Run the negative lead, the black one, from the battery connector just directly to the black negative lead of the motor. And that's all you have to do. Now, if we did this correctly, and let's hope we did, Let's pop in a couple of batteries, and there you go. You have a working EM pump. Now, uh, you grab a meter. Okay, again, when you want to be careful when you're closing this up, make sure your wires aren't anywhere near the magnet or the motor. You don't want them getting tangled up. Okay. And that's really all there is to that. Fairly simple connection. And that's how you build an EM pump. And if you don't want to take the time to do this, it's not that hard, but if you know if you're just not 
uh, solder friendly. <laughs> you just don't like doing this kind of thing. These are available on eBay. There's a lot of vendors who sell these. It's a um, it's a very common design, and they all work great. You know, buy them from anyone you can find a decent price for them. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's all about cooperation. You know, we're, this is not a competition. Paranormal research is about cooperation. So let's all kick in together, help each other out. Because the Lord knows the rest of the world is not here to help us, and the scientific community is not necessarily our friend. So, so let's work together and all get along. And uh, hopefully, we'll further paranormal research and maybe find some of the answers we've been looking for. Alrighty, it is on now. K2, it's picking a little bit up off that magnet that's in there. That reading you're seeing, that's from the magnet itself. But when you turn that sucker on, then you get a wide EMF field. And that's what an EM pump is, and that's what it does. Give it a little more accurate reading. Again, a little bit of a spike off that magnet. And you turn that sucker on, it pegs a regular EMF meter. And it's pegged it again. Okay, so there you are, that's an EM pump. Um, if you do wish to buy them from us on uh, eBay, uh, you can find us under Colorado Paratech. Uh, there's, like I said, there's plenty of other good vendors out there, so feel free to buy from anybody. It doesn't really matter as long as we all help each other. Everything we make goes to help pay for everything we do. Um, my group in particular is a registered 501c nonprofit organization. We don't charge clients, so everything we make goes to helping us serve the public. Uh, you know, the cost of gas and batteries these days, you know, any dime we can pull together helps. So if you want to buy these from us, that's great. If you want to buy them from somebody else, that's just as great. But help everybody out. Everybody pitch in together and let's support each other and uh, help further paranormal research. Um, you can visit me on the web at uh, coparatech.com. That's C-O-P-A-R-A-T-E-C-H dot com. All one word. Or uh, you can find me on eBay and Colorado Paratech. You can also visit uh, the group's website at pureparanormal.com, all one word. And uh, again, thanks for your time. I hope you find this thing useful and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Uh, be safe out there and uh, happy hunting.